What's up guys, Chris VA Travels, and I'm not in Virginia again. I'm in West Virginia, Harper's Ferry. As a matter of fact, I'm on the very tip of West Virginia, the very eastern tip, at the confluence of, you got the Shenandoah River right here, flowing into the Potomac, which leads to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is 60, I think, three miles away. And, yeah, so I'm just take a walk around town, look at some of the historic buildings. Across the way, you've got Maryland Heights. You've got Virginia Laurel Heights over there. And one thing kind of neat to point out, on the side of that uh, mountain, there's an old painted sign uh, from the 1910s. Uh, it was painted for the railroad passengers, and it was painted with a paint they couldn't get off. So kind of a, a billboard uh, of its time. It's for Menin. And I can see the word powder written at the bottom. So, oh, and this is what's left of the original B&O train bridge. And this is the bridge John Brown and his posse uh, crossed over in. Uh, he crossed over with 18 men and, and, a, uh, and a wagon. So, yeah, there's a trail. I think it's about two and a half miles that wraps around, loops up to just about the top of the heights there. And, and you have a great view of the... Uh, of the town but I don't have time to to walk it so and yeah town right back over here while I'm walking I'll just give you some quick quick history quick history on the John, John Brown situation since this is most of the town's named for so John Brown he was shacked up at the Kennedy farm about five miles north there in Maryland and uh, that's where he made his plans to uh, capture the town. He had planned to come down on a Sunday night because he knew the armory here was just guarded with one guard, which is kind of crazy. Armory with over 100,000 guns. So he crossed over about 10, about 10 p.m. and was initially successful. He, ta he had taken, like I said, a guard prisoner. He had a couple of his men snip the telegraph lines. The war that ended slavery. And here's the firehouse where he ended up uh, being captured. Uh, he, he held up with his uh, with his hostages. Yeah, so it was a, initially successful. He, he captured the guard, had the uh, telegraph wires clipped. Uh, also sent some men in to capture some of the plot, prominent figures in the area to use them, hold them as hostage. Later, uh, one of which was Lewis Washington, the great grandnephew of George Washington. So yeah, old firehouse. And this, this uh, little building has been moved four times. And one time it was in Chicago during the 1890s, which is kind of crazy. And its original location would be that obelisk right there. I'll walk up to that in a minute, about 150 feet away. But uh. Yeah, since then they had built this embankment for a uh, a train line. And this picture here is what things look like. So John Brown's Fort, so I guess the kind of the road went straight up here. John Brown's Fort originally right up there. Uh, this is the armory series of buildings, obviously no longer here. They've now built this uh, train embankment. So John Brown crossed the bridge. He went up to the gates here. That's where he took that guard prisoner. Yeah, so, and a bunch of old buildings. They've got this kind of set up, maybe like Williamsburg. All right, walk up these icy steps. And so yeah, so John Brown initially successful, but things went south quick uh, because shortly after they had arrived, a train came into town. They attacked the train and ironically enough, uh, the one passenger on, on the train was a black man they ended up killing. He was a porter or a watchman. But, and then for some unknown reason, they let the train go. So the train took off the next stop. It shot word to Washington, D.C. that Harper's Ferry was under attack. Uh, word spread that it was like 150 men. So President James Buchanan 
shout out i visited james buchanan's house last weekend lancaster pennsylvania visited wheatland go check out the video yeah so he sent a detachment of marines to come squash the insurrection here and those 90 marines were led by Ar army colonel at the time robert e lee uh, second in command was jeb stewart so he had them sent out and they didn't arrive until that monday evening i think it was late that evening and when they arrived they assessed the situation and they saw it wasn't as bad as they thought uh, by this time john brown was held up in the firehouse robert e lee knew they were surrounded there was no chance for them to escape uh, he knew that there were civilians there were hostages inside so he decided not to not to attack or not to do anything to the following morning that tuesday morning so and i should mention throughout the day on that monday like i say things went south when word was quickly shot to washington dc that the attack was going on real quick let me stop all right so lewis and clark uh, meriwether lewis uh he stopped here march 16th uh of course 1883 on, on their famous expedition and he oversaw the building of a collapsible iron frame skin clad boat uh, tomahawks and rifles he left for Pennsylvania uh, returned July 7th to gather their more materials took off again and that's where he met up with uh, William Clark who was born in Caroline County I'll just mention and Whitehall Tavern oysters and lunches Whitehall Tavern And this was a tav tavern frequented by workers at the armory. So pretty neat. Real quick to continue with my story. Uh, during that Monday, uh, word had spread to all the towns, Charlestown. Oh. Is it open? Okay, you can go in. Uh, all right. Okay, talking about Thomas Jefferson, of course. Uh, yeah, authorized this big uh, expedition, Lewis and Clark. The experiments. Uh, this is that skin-covered boat he had authorized. And uh, Meriwether Lewis designed the boat uh, to be light, to be collapsible, so he could pick it up uh, whenever they reached falls or uh, shallow water. There he is, William Clark. Yeah, they had these tomahawks to trade with the natives. Uh, yeah, and it just talks about how they were out to keep a journal of everything they saw. some coffee shops here some really older buildings maybe I'll drop into one of these it looks like that's just ice cream there's a general store Harper's Ferry general store here's the train station where I parked and to let you know it said that you are to pay to park I didn't see anywhere to pay uh, I walked inside a guy had told me that they wouldn't tow me and that uh, I might see a park ranger in the parking lot and I should talk with him. Anyway. I love mountains. All right, real quick to get out. So that Monday, John Brown had taken over Harper's Ferry, but uh, locals had spread out to the countryside, spread word that Harper's Ferry was under attack. And a little militia mustered up. They came in and they fought John Brown's posse throughout the day. So there's pretty much gunfire throughout the day. And John John uh, Brown's posse got withered down to just four people who were not uh, who were not injured or killed. And they eventually that's when they uh, 
sometime that day that's where they shacked up at the firehouse so all right and it looks like a caboose up here or something All right, so a restaurant coming soon, I guess. All right, kind of hit a dead end. I think I'm going to walk back up, uh, take a right at John Brown's Fort and walk up that road. This building says Master Armorer's House Exhibits. It says open. Let's see. Oh, cool. French flag over here. Store College was a black college here in Harper's Ferry. And they actually had the firehouse on the campus of the college at one time. Yeah, and that's where I was standing originally. Like I say, Virginia, the Loudon Knights, the Maryland Heights. Oh, canal boat. Yeah, part of the CNO canal is on the other side of the river the other side of the Potomac. Yeah, George Washington was out here at one time. And he's the one who decided this was a good spot to build the armory. of the peninsula here. You'll see the armory right across the, along the river there. Oh yeah, John Brown's entire history. Born in 1800 up in Connecticut. I think he lived six different places throughout his life. Uh, he had 20 children through three different, I'm sorry, two different marriages. Um, also, John Brown was not a successful businessman. I know he was in debtor's prison at one time. He suffered bankruptcy, opened a series of businesses, pretty much all of which failed. I know one was a tannery. Yeah, they've got a ton, a ton of maps of this place, so... That must have been the big arsenal we're looking at, the small arsenal. And like I've said a hundred times, the armory there. And... I think maybe I exit over here. old wrought iron gate here over here Philip Franklin Company looks 
like they made hats and caps, boots and shoes, dry goods store, general shop. I think I can walk in here as well, open. of notices, wanted posters, $100 reward, Indian, something, something, so much. Beans, peas, peaches, some syrup up there. Here it says this is open. Walk in here. Oh, cool. Old drone. Looks like prisoner status or station. Prisoner status, 501 Rebels, POW. Yeah, so I guess Marshall stayed in here. Is there a jail or something back here? One way. Baker's Bakery over there is that I think that might be open I'm gonna walk over here maybe this is oh I can go in here oh this is pretty cool rifling machine Uh, made the stock, the barrel. Lock, stock, and barrel. Oh, here you go. doors yeah I'm glad I came out today paid about $50 in gas and it's cold and icy but there's hardly a anybody in town oh, uh, bathrooms. <laughs> the train trussle over there hardware I wonder if I can
Oh wow, this town flooded. 1936, all the way up to the second floor. Mm. Guess you can walk down to the, that would be the Shenandoah River over there. To let anybody know there's also parking down there. It's quite a ways. It's a good quarter, quarter to a half a mile. Bookshop, fancy goods. Pretty neat building. Don't see a sign on it. African American history. Confectionery, huh? Defeat and victory. Battle of Harper's Ferry. Uh, I guess you can go in there. Sweets for Harper's Ferry. Casualties of war, German immigrants. Frederick Frederick was a prosperous baker, father of seven children. Okay, the other side of that restaurant I was just looking at. Oh, yeah. And the guy, Frederick Roeder, the German immigrant who owned that confectionery shop. He fought for the Union. And he died a friendly fire. A uh, Union bullet had ricocheted, hitting and killing him. Cannonball Deli. I think I hit the end of the historic district, so I'm going to head back this way. All right, over there, it says attorney at law on the upper floor there. Sign says John Brown. I don't know exactly what that is. But this is the site of the arsenal. And like I say, the armory was set up along the river there. The arsenal, the armory is where they made the weapons. The arsenal is where they stored them. Yeah, and this is a little map. This is where I was standing originally, looking at the uh, the Shenandoah flowing into the Potomac Armory. Like I say, down that road over there, and here we are, the arsenal. So it looks like the small arsenal would have been right there. And here are some of the muskets uh, they would have stored. Oh, so this is High Street, 1886. Uh, yeah, this is what it would've looked like. So, pretty large building. All right, I'm gonna make my way to the church. Okay, so other things to check out here. Harper's Ferry, Jefferson Rock. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was out here, the Lockwood House. And that's that store, the Black College, about a half a mile away. And church is up there. I'm gonna walk up these icy stone stairs. Like a little walkway through there. Williamson's Tavern.
St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church. And there were a lot of Irish immigrants uh, who come to Harper's Ferry uh, during the 1830s, uh, during the building of the B&O line. And it is closed today. Uh, a note about the church, it actually it flew the Union Jack flag, British flag, to show its neutrality so it wouldn't be shelled by Confederate or Union soldiers. This ice is starting to melt, so that's good. And this is the oldest structure in Harper's Ferry. It's the Harper's house. Uh, built by Robert Harper, who founded the town. He had built a ferry across the river. And this thing, he founded the town in 1775, built this house. It was completed 1782. And it looks like maybe you can walk upstairs. Let's take a quick walk up. Well, you've got a great shot of the river uh, and the, the train trussles, the train bridges. Uh, Springhouse Root Cellar. like a little jail cell but it's a uh, just a root cellar I'll be adventurous and walk up here looks like maybe a cemetery up here Jefferson Rock is up here. I'll check that out. So the ruins of the St. John's Episcopal Church. And it was built 1852 during the Civil War. Blah, blah, blah. It served as a hospital. And uh, it eventually was abandoned in 1895. All right. here Jefferson Rock I'll walk over there in a second uh, here's a photo I'm sorry a drawing from 1810 uh, drawn by the designer of the US Capitol and from here Jefferson uttered the scene is worth the voyage across the Atlantic and in the 1860s these red pillars were placed under the rock because it was starting to teeter and I would imagine they've been there ever since Rock. Oh. Alright, the other side of those ruins. That big red house up on the hill is just a uh, private residence. It's not the Lockwood house. I'm hoping it's up here. Y'all try to squeeze in my never ending, the rest of my never ending John Brown story. So, I said, uh, as I said, John Brown, pretty much unsuccessful in life, a series of failed businesses was in debtor's prison, suffered bankruptcy, and uh, he slowly began, he slowly got deeper into the abolitionist cause. And he first became radical, first became violent during Bleeding Kansas, the Kansas-Nebraska Kansas -Nebraska Act, which pretty much set things backwards. It repealed the Missouri Compromise. Missouri Compromise 
I see there cannot be slavery above the 3630 parallel. Well, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, like I say, reneged that. Believed in popular sovereignty, private home. We're on Church Street. And yeah, Maryland Heights again up there. Oh yeah, so popular sovereignty. It means it was up to the states. They could vote and decide if there was going to be slavery. So a bunch of pro-slavery. The entrance. Oh yeah, also, real quick to let you know, this must be part of the... I don't know. I, I know that we're right in the middle of the Appalachian Trail here in Harpers Ferry. And... Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so anyway, so they left it up to Kansas and Nebraska to decide if there was going to be slavery. So a bunch of pro-slavery and anti-slavery anti settlers had flooded into the area. Things, things became heated. First, John Brown's uh, sons came out in 1855. They wrote, wrote a letter to John saying, bring guns. Things are getting a little crazy out of here. So John came out. Again, things, things got heated. And the town of Lawrence was sacked. It was raided by a bunch of... Whoa. Uh, it just fell off the tree or at the uh, telephone lines. And yeah, Lawrence had been sacked and that angered John Brown. And also about this time was when Charles Sumner, a uh, senator from Connecticut, was beaten with a cane <laughs> by a South Carolina politician, partly because Charles Sumner had insulted one of his relatives. I anyway, so in his mind, it was game on. So he went, and this is uh, this is now... 1856 he went and killed five pro uh pro slavery settlers and actually dragged them out of the home he and a group of men and killed them with swords so yeah that's when it uh that's when things got crazy um after that he went on the lamb he just moved all around places uh throughout the north he at one time lived with uh frederick Douglass. lived in his attic lived in canada for a little while and during this time, he had written a constitution trying to create a new country uh, for free slaves where he was, I guess, the president or whatever. And yeah, I'm looking for that Lockwood house. I don't know who it's going to be up here. Yeah, Potomac over there. Yeah, I think I'm just going to head down and get something to eat, get back to my car. Um, yeah, so anyway, so he was on the lam for a couple of years. And this is when he really kind of went off the deep end and he kind of looked at himself as kind of maybe a cult-like, a divine cult-like figure. He grew that giant beard and he gathered a, a little militia. Fast forward 1859, he had rented that farmhouse, the Kennedy Farm, that way up in Maryland. And that's where he planned his big attack on Harper's Ferry. Which, and that's kind of where I, I started uh, further ahead. So kind of crazy. I can tell you after he was captured, uh, he was sentenced, sentenced to death. He was put on trial for uh, murder, first of all, uh, inciting an insurrection, an insurrection, and I think treason. And his trial was kind of a mockery. He decided to represent himself, uh, where he laid on a hospital bed, a cot the entire time because he was injured. And yeah, he was sentenced to death, and it was December of 1859. He was uh, he was hung. And uh, a bunch of soldiers came up from VMI, uh, headed by Stonewall Jackson, Thomas Jackson, and uh, because they thought maybe there was going to be some sort of uh, some sort of riot or some people from the north were going to come down and try to, to break him free. So, yeah. Also, uh, kind of a side note: John Wilkes Booth was in attendance uh, at his hanging, so that's kind of interesting. And over here, 1826, the Riley House. Private residence, this federal style house was acquired out of the War Department, 1837. Let me get a shot of it back here. Huh, I wonder if that's how it looked in 1826. I don't know. A little soldier right there. Okay, so I'm getting down to some uh, civilization down here. A couple restaurants, it looks like. Store looks like jewelry, glass. Uh, it's got beer, wine, food. Um, yeah, so that's that's the end of that story, 1859. And they say that really that was the uh, the beginning of the Civil War. So,
think that opens in April. Coach House Bar and Grill. Alright, just had lunch and I found out that Lockwood house, it's a little too far to walk, so I think I'm gonna fly my drone and get out of here. And yeah, I walked back over here. I don't think I had uh when I was giving my speech about John Brown, I think I had left off. Robert E. Lee decided he, he arrived Monday evening. He decided not to confront Brown until Tuesday morning because he, he knew he had John uh, surrounded. Uh, there was nowhere he could go. So yeah, that Tuesday morning he had Jeb Stewart come forward. Asked John if he wanted to surrender. John refused. And Robert E. Lee had the Marines fasten bayonets. He didn't want the firehouse fired upon because they were hostages inside. So they come to the firehouse uh, and they actually used sledgehammers, tried to bash the door in. It wasn't working, so they grabbed a ladder, uh, started banging the door, and on the third thrust, they busted a hole. Uh, and one of the Marines came inside. First person he saw was in Washington. Uh, Washington cut his eyes over John Brown to let them know where he was at. John was slouched uh, somewhere on the ground. And the Marine came over. Uh, the story goes, I've heard a couple different stories. One, that he had used a sword, hit John in the head, uh, which, yeah, I, I don't know how that didn't kill him with a sword, uh, then tried to thrust at him and the, uh, and either John had a breastplate or the sword hit his belt buckle. I've also heard, heard the story that he used his bayonet. Anyway, he thrusted John in the stomach, hit his, I guess, belt buckle and, uh, didn't kill him. So that's, uh, so John wasn't killed. He was captured. Yeah. That's a little story with the capture of John Brown. So, all right, take a walk down here. Looks like these are the grounds where the uh, the armory armory was, and very icy stairs again. All right, so these little plaques are going to tell you the different buildings in, in the armory. And take a walk over here. My favorite boat. And this metal frame is a replica of that collapsible boat I was talking about that Meriwether Lewis designed. So you can see it's not all that big. Been pretty tight quarters. And uh, over here, boat ramp, daring escapes. And yeah, boat ramp, this would have went to the pontoon bridge that was built during the Civil War. And here's that uh, original train bridge that uh, John Brown crossed. Uh, all that's left are these little support beams. And this is the modern CSX line. And take a walk down, nobody else has been down here today. And I know shh, snow's deeper than I thought, and I don't have boots on. And dang, it's really deep. Wow, okay. No going back now. And I saw in a video researching this place that there are some original hooks that were used to support the pontoon bridge that date back to the Civil War. And these are flood walls. These were built 1830. And yeah, it's crazy to think this river would flood that high. But I try to avoid the mud. And right here, watch the video, the uh, American Battlefield Trust. This right here is uh, original from the Civil War. And it was used to support the pontoon bridge. And... Yeah, this is what Stonewall Jackson crossed on, on his way to Antietam. I can tell you also Abraham Lincoln, two weeks after Antietam, crossed the bridge coming into Harper's Ferry. So, pretty neat. And yeah, another hook over here. So, 
kind of cool to touch something that was used during the Civil War. That thing's in there tight. And these two bridges weren't here at the time of the Civil War. If you can see back behind, like I say, the beam, that original, uh, the original train bridge. Walk back up this. Try to walk back in my tracks. You can see how deep this is. Oh yeah, it looks like they had water flowing underneath to power some of the machinery. Kind of neat. And yeah, I guess this is where the uh, the water exited. Found underground. Oh wow, they found an old toothbrush, pipe, comb. Yeah, it looks like they did some uh, archaeology work over here. Your typical plates, belt buckle, Union soldier, a couple bullets. All right, head back to my car. It's a little train station. All right, well, apparently this red and brown paint scheme lets you know this was a B&O station. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, apparently you do have to pay to park. I have to see what this is all about. All right. Again, if you like these kinds of videos, you could subscribe. If you want to support the channel, hit the like button and see you.